In an animation, once you've got the blocking in place, it's time to add in other more subtle parts. Again, keeping the tangent step so we can judge expression and pose before we see tweens. So far, I've got my Anibot starting out. He crouches down and bounces up. I'm going to add in a descent and a landing, maybe a pause at the top to look around, and then animate his facial controls. I'll select his master control, making sure I animate that first, getting the body in the right place and right orientation. He's got two keys where he crouches down, so it's a good place to add in some facial expression there. He takes a little over a second to spring up, and I'm going to use about the same time to come down. I may let him hang in the air ever so slightly, but I'll deal with that when I get the tweens in. Right now I'm going to go over to about frame, oh, let's say 83, and I'll pull him down on the ground, pressing W for move, and pulling him back down. I'll go into a front view, and make sure I press 4 for wireframe, and pull him down. He's going to hit and start to scale. I'll press Shift W to key and then I'm going to scale him. His scale was last keyed up here and I need to make sure I put in a key to return that scale back to zero and then he can hit and squish. I'm going to offset this key a little bit so it's not quite a match. Saying that about frame 60 or so, pressing Control A to go to the channel box, his squash and stretch returns back to zero. I'll right click and choose key selected. Now at the top of the animation, he comes up and returns back to a zero. He's got a little spring right there. And now he comes back down at 83 and needs to squish again. Part of the neat thing with set key is that you can get in there and try out a pose and when you finally got it, key it. And you can even key right over existing keys easily. By setting his squash and stretch back to zero, he's off the ground a bit. I'll pull him back down, maybe even in just a tiny bit, and press Shift W to key that again. Then I'll come in and move forward a little bit, putting that squash and stretch key in so that as he hits, he squishes on the bounce. I'll bring that squash and stretch down just a touch maybe negative point one. We can always come in here and animate a key by typing in a value. As an alternate, I can click and drag on the values and pull them down. It depends on the fineness of the control we want. I'm going to let him squish pretty considerably, maybe down in the point three range. I'll right click and key that value, choosing key selected, and then I'll make sure that I pull him down at that point, and key movement again. Now I'm ready to add some face controls in. We're going to see lots of keys in here, getting this animation looking right. He's completely neutral at the moment. What I may want to do is think about what his eye is doing first, his body works, and then how the motion radiates out from his eye. He may start out with his lids closed. He's squinting down as part of that jump, and then gets wide-eyed at the top, and comes back down and clenches again. I can also use the rotation controls built in to let him pivot forward a little bit and maybe even wiggle as part of that jump later. What I'll do is to pick his eye first, looking at the controls, and I'll say at frame one, his eye is keyed fairly closed. I'll take the bottom lid value and pull it up and down, just closing up that eye a touch and then right clicking and keying it. I'll take the top lid and do the same. And what I need to make sure of here is that it's not the same value. It's important to keep things asymmetric and let motions overlap. I'll right click and key this, and now I'm ready to look at the jump. Right about here, he's squished down, and I'm going to let him really squish those lids in. I'll take that top lid value and pull it down a little further, and right click and key it again. Then I'll come over just another frame or two and do the bottom lid, selecting it and closing it up. I'll right click and key it, and now he's squinty. Then I'll let him bounce up and let those eyes open. I'll do this so that after he's at the top of his bounce, his eye is fully open. I'll bring this up because I still have the value selected, opening that eye up wide. I'll right click and key it. Then I'll go off a few frames from there and open up the top. 
Every time I key it, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not twinning, that the motion is asymmetric, and even the angle is a little bit bigger here. I'll right-click and key this, set all those tangents to step, and see how it looks. I'll hold Shift, drag along my timeline, right-click, and choose Tangents Stepped. Let's see if this worked. He starts out, goes down into a squint, and springs up, and that eye opens up at the top of that bounce. He may even need to elongate a little bit more, as he's surprised at how high he jumped. One more time. Squint down, bounce up, and that eye goes open. And there he is down again, and I'm ready to finish hitting and squinting down. We want to think of it in terms of major action first, and then add in the secondary pieces. Always going through and setting our tangents to step, and looking at the pose. Right here at the top, which is actually a few keys, is he open and surprise looking. And it looks like I need to adjust that scale so he's stretched out a little more. Down here in the bottom of the crouch, he's crouched down and his lids are low. He's getting ready to spring forward. I'll keep going with this, blocking in the major body and then adding in the face pieces, starting with the eye and letting that emotion radiate out. In the next video then, I'll look at the mouth and getting his crouch really ready.